Okay, today we have a Heston Nandy Garch option model. Um, now, um, it's quite popular amongst academics. I, as uh, I've heard a few people say, it's not very used frequently in practice. And I thought, uh, generally when that people say that, it's not right. But I found that it's not that useful, um, as we'll see when we go through it. It sounds really interesting and great. I spent a lot of time researching it, but um, the results just aren't very good. Um, it could be, well, I tried, a lot. Yeah, I spent a lot of time on this, I'm working out. Anyway, it's from the library F options from the R metrics team. Um, and uh, QuantumMod is the library I use to download the SPY daily data. Now I've downloaded with get symbols there the spy data. I looked at the structure, we won't look at that again. Daily returns, spy type of was log, logarithmic returns rather than arithmetic. Um, logarithmic returns are used in quant finance. I won't go into the details why, it just is. And spy has to be returned for use uh, data with the F options or uh, with any R metrics library, you have to convert them into time series. It's their own unique um, time library with a capital S. It doesn't work with XTS, SU, um, TS, no other time series library will work with R metrics stuff. I won't run that. Um, we will run this. The first model, now this is interesting, I used the model, test model that was to fit for the H Garch fit model um, that was given in the uh, RCRAN library um, uh, reference manual. And uh, this was the result I got. And I thought, oh, well, it's probably a closer estimate. So I fed these back in to the model, thinking it'll iterate and get an even closer fit model. But uh, yeah, I obviously don't know maximum likelihood methods well enough because um, it fitted the same model as the model which fitted the first time regardless of the parameters. So yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so regardless of the initial parameters being way off, uh, it converged to the real parameters because when I fed the real parameters back, it converges really fast, which we'll show, I'll show you. Uh, there is the HGARCH symmetric model, there. Um, quite a few thousand days. You need a lot of days for uh, GARCH models. You can see um, that was around 2008 and 9, the big uh, spike in volatility. And that's probably, I don't know, it must have been last year the big spike, around uh, March. And uh, we'll do the fit model here. And we'll go down. Oops. We'll move down and we will print the diagnostics out. Ah, my chart didn't come. Where's the chart? Oh yeah, there's a chart. They're a bit condensed. We'll, we'll, we'll zoom them in to get a better look. As you can see, that is the conditional standard deviations from the Gartz model. Interesting, isn't it? From 2010, that was about 2009, yeah. Um, 2015, and then there's a spike last year, 2020, about March. And it's tapered off again to its usual level. And uh, there is the log returns. They mirror the volatility where the spikes are. It's funny how it goes up before it crashes. It really spikes up as well as down. Most odd that. And um, we'll go down and we'll fit the uh, 
18 Garch Fit Model Statistics. Ah, uh, for some reason they're not showing in this. The main, the variance, the skewness. Now this is what's important. The skewness is positive. So it's skewed to the upside, not to the downside. And uh, the kurtosis there uh, on the fitted model is close to a normal fit, which isn't right because the actual spy fit is about three times the size of the normal kurtosis. Uh, that's a normal distribution, bell curve or Gaussian curve, whatever you want to call it. Is a perfect fit for a Gaussian curve is three. Uh, the spy is actually 12, which is four times that. Um, persistence is high, so there is a trend up in volatility, which is unusual. And the sigma, mean sigma, mean sigma, Mean sigma. I'm not sure of those. I'll have to check those. I mean, the manual. And here's the model to get the fit, the um, estimates. Oh, fit it in there. The model is I'm um, looking at the spy today. The price is 445.87, and the exercise price of the call I've got which I'm trading, is $4, 449 So it's slightly out of the money, but what I want to see is the likelihood of it being in the money. But unfortunately, this model doesn't, is not very helpful. Not when you see the price. It's ridiculous. Uh, that was the estimate they used for Sigma. It, it was, I don't know why they use it. They obviously, they're clever more, they're more clever mathematicians than me, but I always use a standard, standard deviation. Uh, it, it gave a more realistic value, but it's still unrealistic. You know, we'll run the model now. And uh, what have we got down here? All right, we, we'll, now we'll get the price. We'll fit the price of the options, the estimates of what they claim with the uh, Heston Nandy model. And they claim the price of the call today is 919 and the put is 786. Well, I don't sell a put the same price I sell a call. I sell a strangle, so that's irrelevant. We won't look at that. But 919 is about three times the value of the actual, um, and certainly not the actual generalised black skulls fit. Um, the prices, I don't know where they come from. I don't know how they get that. If that's based on the volatility, volatility must be, uh, the market The market must be well underestimating the volatility according to the model. Anyway, well, I'll show you the what my tasty trade says. Volatility, as you can see there, is 15.1%. Let's close that positions. Uh, Four forty nine. It's trading for three dollars twenty nine, and the Heston Nandy model estimated it at nine dollars. I have no explanation. It's got me dumbfounded. Uh, anyway, I think that's about it. Um, it just doesn't seem to be that useful. I've done this for a few months now. I thought it must be, you know, there's so much literature on it. They spend so much time talking about it. You know, you think it was the best thing since sliced bread. It's certainly never come within QE of a realistic valuation for me. But uh, who am I to criticise what academics um, spend their hours getting PhDs on? Anyway, all the best.